we are becoming more physically protective of ourselves. We are isolating and socially distancing. But that doesn't mean that we have to emotionally isolate or distance too. In fact, we can become even closer and more emotionally connected. In times of fear, we feel the need to connect. But because of this virus, we fear contact. We are terrified of touching other people, of touching anything, of touching metal counters, anything. So, I mean, even, you know, I'm, I'm in this black turtleneck outfit because it just makes me feel safer, even though I'm in my own home, in my own podcast studio. Here's the thing, though. The virus can actually be a unifier. We are finally all on the same page, the entire world. And experiences are connectors, and we are all in this together. So it's time to start talking and not touching, because conversation is where deep connection is created. So this is all about no contact connecting, how to connect when it comes to dating and relationships and romance without necessarily touching. So when it comes to dating, I have clients who don't want to date because they don't want to go out and meet new people. They don't want to go out to restaurants. They don't want to be exposed. They don't want to touch anything. You can actually date more if you date from home, through your phone, through video chat, through recorded message dates, okay? I've always loved long distance dating because of this, because you go deeper, because you go more real, because you get more vulnerable. I mean, it reminds me of when I was in eighth grade and when I loved talking on the phone. And there was this guy who I talked to on the phone and we would talk for hours. I mean, hours, eighth grade, ninth grade. As I would rush home from school so that we could get on the phone. We talked so much and got to know each other so well and so deeply that my mom would, would come home from work at 6 or 7 p.m. and literally tear the phone out of the wall because I was talking on the phone too much. What was interesting was that because of our situation, I was I was an outcast. I was not popular in junior high school. And this guy was really popular. So he and I weren't that close in real life um, at school, but we were so close on the phone. And then there's that show, um, Love is Blind, uh, with Nick Lachey, Nick and Vanessa Lachey. And I, I don't, I think it, there's only been one season, so not everyone has seen it yet, but the idea is that these couples are sitting talking with, in their own rooms, they're meeting and talking and falling in love in different rooms without being able to see each other with a wall between them. Because within that space, they're able to be comfortable and let their guard down and get really vulnerable. And they proposed on the show. Like, that's part of it. They actually proposed because they got real. Yeah, they put effort into it on these dates. The, each of the daters would go in dressed up, done up. They would go in with a beverage or, you know, not and just sit on the sofa, feel pretty, feel confident, and then get deep because they had the safety of the wall. They had the safety and the, the feeling of protection that they didn't actually see each other. So they were able to get even more vulnerable. In my client calls, I have some clients who have wanted to have in-person calls. And while I understand that, what I've actually experienced is that my clients who are on video Skype and even more so on the phone open up more, go deeper faster, get vulnerable faster. And it's because they have the feeling of safety through the screen. So they're able to open up more. And this can happen in the dating space also. 
Um, and if you think about dating long distance, I remember I had a boyfriend long distance who I had, we, he and I had never physically met, but we knew each other through work um, and through video Skype. And we started dating and we would have these long, long, long video and phone and text and WhatsApp and Marco Polo and everything, conversations and exchanges. And within that space, we got so, I mean, really deeply deeply connectedly close and we can all create that and this is an opportunity to create that so and you can go on more dates because you could do back-to-backs you know you can go on a date a night you can go on three dates a night or day you can have a, a morning date afternoon anyway okay so what do you do so first you need to define your true needs we are, especially in this day and age, becoming sick of surface, superficial relationships. What is truly important to you? What do you actually need? Then you need to define your core values. Who are you? Then define what do you bring to the table? What do you have to offer? You want all of these things from them. Well, what about you? What do you bring? Then you need to show up. Emotionally, obviously not physically, but you need to show up energetically with who you are, unapologetically, without judgment, without fear of rejection, without fear of judgment. And I know that this sounds like a lot, like how do you create all of these? How do you define all of that stuff? And I I have a product, Love Actually Academy, that helps you to dig in, that helps you to connect with yourself first and then with someone else so that you can catch them and then you can continue the relationship. And within Love Actually Academy, I have specific strategic conversations, uh, conversation starters that you can, that can help you to, to begin, to get onto this road of deeply connecting. So if you're online dating, have real conversations online, real conversations, not just, hey, what's up? Not much. What are you up to? Oh, hanging out at home because of the virus. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah, it's scary, huh? Yeah. You have any toilet paper? Oh, we're running low. Can't find any at Am- on Amazon or in any of the grocery stores. Yeah, that's not the conversation you want to have, right? You want to have real conversation. You want to you wanna dig in. And if they're unwilling to dig in, then that's okay. Maybe they're not for you. So have these real conversations. Then take your relationship to the next level by going on to the phone. Have a phone date. Say, you know, I'd love to take this relationship to the next level. Let's have a phone date. What time works for you? Oh, tonight at 7 p.m.? Great, that works for me too. I'll give you a call then. Then, you know, get yourself in a place where you feel good, be where you feel confident, where you are physically and emotionally present so that you can have that call. Then step it up again. Take your relationship to the next level by going on to video chat. You can do FaceTime. You can do Skype. If you are in different countries, you can do WhatsApp. You can leave messages for each other on Marco Polo. There's so many different opportunities that you can, different devices and platforms that you can use in order to do this. And and I know that that is a a big step to see the video, you know, to, to see what's really going on, and and it allows for the deepening. I love to know where someone is when I'm talking to them, especially if it's someone who I've been talking to for a long time. Like, where are you? Where are you sitting? What is that? What does your chair look like? What area in the room are you in? And, and that's something that you can do too. You know, like, oh, this is not only me, but this is where I am. Obviously, you're going to be dressed up. You're going to look good. You're going to put effort into it because you're on a date. You are on a date. Now, uh, you might think, well, I don't know them, though. So what do I talk about on the phone? What do I talk about on video? You can ask random questions. You can also ask strategic questions. I've developed the 100 questions for connection. And it helps you to connect, deepen, and expand your relationships from the very beginning, from before you have your first date, from your from online conversations. And these are our questions and conversations that allow you to really get to know each other, to learn your core values, to learn your needs, um, learn and expose and express each other's core values and needs so that you can truly, truly connect.
connect. And then once you've connected, to really expand the conversation, to deepen it, to allow you to get closer than you would have had you just had surface superficial dates where you sit and have coffee and like, how's your day? Cool. You like rock music? Yeah, me too. It allows you for, allows you to gamify having conversations as long as you call it out, you know, so it's going to say, you're going to say something like, oh, you know, well, we obviously don't know each other very well. So how about if we just ask some random questions and you, know, you don't have to answer all of them. Let's, so here are 10 questions. Which ones do you want to answer? I'm going to answer these. And if you want to, you can, you can then answer the same one that I just answered. And if you don't want to, then you can jump to another one instead. So you can find my 100 questions for connection on Love Actually Academy. And I'm also, um, if you buy the Academy, then it, it comes with the questions. It comes with the conversation starters. I'm also trying to put it together so that it's just the questions. Um, if you want, you can send me an email to laurel at laurelhouse.com. Um, and you can buy the PDF form of just the 100 questions for connection. And I'm selling that for $25. And I will send you the email and you can send me the money via, via PayPal or Venmo. So email me laurel at laurelhouse.com if you want that. So, yeah, but you don't have to do my 100 questions. There, is, are, there are a ton of, of question um, packets and and boxes and conversation expanders. Now mine are created specifically for for dating and relationships based on on my experience as a dating coach and relationship expert. But you know, if you want to do your own, do your own. Um, you can do 20 questions if you want. You can play two truths and one lie, which is always really fun. And then like two truths and one lie that you wish were true. <laughs> Um, you can play Never Would I Ever. These are all conversations that you can have that are fun, that can expand the relationship. Okay, next you're going to have other types of dates that aren't just about talking, still on video. So if you like to go for drinks, then, and you can also have these conversations, have a glass of wine, sit there talking to each other, having your wine or whatever drink it is that you want to have. You can do a beer tasting. So you have the same beers and you said, well, what do you think about that one? Huh, that was interesting. I like this about that. I like that. You can do donut tasting if you're like, no, this donut's better than that donut. Okay, why don't you get all the donuts, get them delivered through Uber Eats or Postmates or whatever, um, DoorDash, whatever it is that you want. And then actually sit there and try the donuts. Try the different types of pizza. Cook together. Here's a recipe. Let's both cook and simultaneously video. So now you're sitting and cooking. You're able to have experiences together, shared experiences. It doesn't have to be about food. You can have, you know, like those paint and sip classes. I love those paint and sip classes. I, I do my own paint and sips by myself. I'll take a photo of something or I'll find an image that I love and I'll just sit in my room and I paint it. it it's just like paying the $30, $40 to go and do it at a class, except the teacher would give you instruction also. So that's one thing that you, necess you don't necessarily have. But that's okay. It's still fun. Order from, from Amazon so you don't have to go out. Order the canvases. Order the paints. Schedule your date. Pick a photo or an image. And then you guys both sit there together with the camera so that you can see that what you're painting and also each other. And then you sit and you you paint whatever it is. We walk around your gardens together. I just planted a bunch of, of new flowers so we could go on a walk around of my garden. Oh my gosh, look at that. What about you? What did you plant? Oh, cool. You can show each other your lives. You know, hi, this is my podcast studio. And I could bring my dog in and, and introduce you to Luna. I could introduce you to my children. I could um, walk around my house and show you things that are important. I can show you, like, my, my different crystals, right? All of these different beautiful crystals that I get and what they mean and why I have them and the significance to me. You can, you can share so much more. And here's the plus. You're saving money because you're not actually going out and spending it. The key is to learn, lean into the experience. If you feel like you are getting gypped because you're not actually out there, you're not in person, you can't touch them, you can't feel the chemistry 
which is ridiculous because uh, connection is so much more powerful and uh, enduring. Um, but if you feel like you're getting gypped, then you are. Because that's the, that's your headspace, right? You're going to put into your mind, oh, I'm getting gypped. And, and then it's not going to be the experience that you want. But if you go into it like, this is awesome, it will be. All right, now for couples, you might not be going out on date nights. So yay, stay in. Have a book club together. You know, we're doing a lot of, of reading, of, of, of soul searching, of redefining, of, of expansion of who we are, of our interests. So decide on a theme and read the same book. And then maybe you have to, you have to get to a, a different chapter. So every day it's one chapter or whatever it is that you want to do. And then you sit together and like, so let's discuss. Or maybe wait until the book is over and then discuss it. You could decide to watch every, the 50 most important, or that's a lot, so maybe the 10 most important classic movies ever made, or the best thrillers ever made, or the best romance, whatever. Have a movie club. Sit and watch it and then discuss and really discuss. You can actually go online and find conversations to have around pretty much every book and pretty much every movie. So you can have you know, the, a movie club. And when I had a book club, I would go online to book club conversations about this book. And you can, and it was great. You can also, couples, you can do 100 questions for connection. My questions. Which, so go online and, and, and buy that or send me an email, laurel, laurelhouse.com. $25 and I will send you the PDF of 100 questions for connection. Or you can buy the full Love Actually Academy that allows you to really define your core values and connect with yourself. It's seven hours of video coaching. Now's the time to do the work, guys. Now's the time to do the work on yourselves. Um, another fun date that you can do with your partner is dress up. Have dress up dates with different themes. Wear a different outfit that you would never normally wear out in public. And like, okay, so tonight is 50s night. Tonight is... Um, I don't know, a crazy animal night. Tonight is fantasy night. And you put on all of these ridiculous outfits. You can do this on your dates too, if you're just dating. You know, just, you know, make them PG or not. Whatever you want, you know, I'm not going to judge. Um, pull out board games. Play Scrabble. Play gin. Have a picnic on your living room floor. Go back to those childhood games that were so fun. You can go and look up websites that have activities to keep children busy when they're at home and do those. They're fun. These activities are fun. I do them with my kids and I love them. We go and we find flowers and we like put a ton of paint on the flower and then we take the painted flower and push it onto a vase or a mug or on a canvas or just on paper and then we have a flower print. There's so many things that you can do and it's fun. The key is to put effort into it and to lean into it. Don't think, this is so stupid. Instead, think, this is really different. And you know what? It's actually fun. If you need to connect in other ways and you're not in a relationship and you're not dating, you know, there, there are great Facebook groups. There's, I've, I connected on Words with Friends with someone who I've been communicating with for years. Not communicating verbally, but just playing games. We've been playing words with friends for years. And he messaged me the other day, just, hey, how you doing with the coronavirus? Are you guys all okay? It was so nice. It was so nice. And, and then we had a really nice, real exchange. Yeah, there's a, a, a mommy group at my son's preschool, and we have this group text, and we've been texting each other more. Everyone's getting more involved. It's making us feel, we're sitting there last night at 9.30 p.m. like, hey, where can we buy toilet paper? <laughs> and I said, uh, can we please just acknowledge for a minute that we are sitting here at 9.30 p.m. talking about toilet paper, but we were all sending links of where to buy it, and it felt, it felt connected. It made me feel not alone. It made me feel less scared. And there are so many of these groups Call your loved ones who you haven't spoken with in forever. Have real, real conversation. This is the time to tell people that you appreciate them and what you appreciate about them. Talk about memories. Talk about experiences. Talk about dreams. Talk about your, anything. Just talk. 
Tell real stories. Don't be afraid to get vulnerable. Try and activate the U strategy, the letter U, positivity, dropping down into some vulnerability and back up into positivity. So we don't want to just be down. And we don't want to just be talking about the coronavirus. And if someone just keeps on going and talking, just say, you know what? I know it's really scary. And I would love to have some positive energy in my life. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't I'm just, let's talk about something fun. Let's talk about, God, what do you dream of doing? What would you do for a living if nothing mattered? Like if it didn't matter about money, if it didn't matter about location, what would you do? I would be a gardener. I would. I love gardening. I love gardening. I go in my garden every morning with my son and we look at all of the new plants. We call them babies. Let's see where, what, how are the babies doing? Oh my gosh, look at that was like that big yesterday and now it's two inches tall. Oh my, I wonder when the flower is going to come out. And it's just, I love it. I love gardening. I'd be a gardener. So what would you be? What, what would you be if you could be anything and it didn't matter? I mean, these are, they're just fun conversations that are revealing. Who, did you guys all know that I loved garden? Maybe, but maybe not. You know, did you know that that's how I de-stress? Did you know that's how I do my thinking? In addition to when I'm in the shower or the bath or getting a massage, my other best thinking comes from gardening, just walking around watering and looking. And I come up with these brilliant ideas and then I have to run in the house. <laughs> I'm like, best idea. I have to get it written down immediately or I'll go and run inside and call someone and be like, oh my God, just had the best idea. Like amazing. You have to do this or we have to do this or whatever. So it's time to connect you guys. Maybe you can't have physical contact, but you can connect. And and it's time for to unify. It's time to come together. You know, no more nastiness. No more saying any saying mean things to each other and and backhanded compliments. Let's just be kind. And you know what? If you don't have something nice to say, then don't say it. If you don't like me, don't watch my videos. You know? Save yourself. Save yourself. Only put in the things that feel good. Yeah, we need to listen to the news. Yeah, we need to learn about those. But but everything else, the, let's let's fill our lives, the other spaces of our lives, with things that that feel good, and that serve us, and that that bring us joy. You know, if clothes, I I do makeup, fun different makeup when I'm at home alone because it brings me joy. I put on funny clothes. I donate. I go through all my stuff and I donate to people in need. Now, now's the time to do that because there are people in need. There are people, if you have a ton of extra toilet paper, then donate some. If you have a ton of extra baby food that you didn't use because your kids hate it, then donate it. If you have extra baby clothes, if you have extra art supplies, if you have extra, you know, I tried to crochet for a while and I was terrible at it. And maybe someone else wants to crochet and that's going to be their thing to do. Then go onto Facebook and donate. You don't have to sell it if you want to, okay, but it feels so good to give it to someone else because we are all in need of something right now. It might be stuff. It might be a compliment. It might be a connection. It might be a, hey, just thinking about you. Hope you're okay. Just want you to know that you matter to me. Let's connect more deeply, more authentically. Thanks so much, you guys. I appreciate you, all of you, you on the podcast and you on video because podcast people, you didn't know I was also videoing this. So you can go to my website uh, or you can go to um, my YouTube channel, Dating Laurel, and you can see me doing this. All right, guys. Thanks. Stay safe.